Well, it was late one evening in Washington, D.C. I was staying at my best friend's house, Nick Pearls, who was the founder of, of Yazoo Records. And there I was, it was about 11.30 at night, and who should I be with but Sun House? And we were just sitting down, drinking and talking, and he was just, I was asking questions, and that was sort of sparking off his memory about different tunes and about different times. And for me, it was, who could ask for anything better than that? And he started to play a tune called Banty Rooster, which I had heard originally from Charlie Patton. But it was a tune that was played quite frequently amongst different blues men in the Mississippi Delta. And I'd like to show you this because it's a whole different technique. It's a whole different right, left-hand technique of playing the guitar from the different tunes we've had up until now. As you probably heard, it's dirty. And you, it's really done with uh, not being uptight. You just have to feel quite at ease with your guitar. And on the bonus audio, I've put various mm -hmm. versions of Banty Rooster so you can hear, because you can sing along with this, obviously. It's a, an accompaniment to a song. But I'm more involved in the guitar technique, the style that came out of the Delta and out of these great players like Sunhouse and Charlie Patton and Robert Johnson. So we're in an open G tuning. So what happens with an open G is that we have our low E string is down to a D and our A string is down to a G so it sounds like the third string and our high E string we tune down to a D as well. So if you strum and cross all the strings you get this sound and the best way is to put a finger, any finger, on the fifth fret of the first string and strum very slowly, and you can hear if it's in tune or not. Now, they call this Spanish tuning. Why? Well, would you believe that, in about, I think it was about the 1830s, 1833, there was a tune called the Spanish Fandango, and it was a piece of parlor guitar music. What that means was that there was a very popular uh, form of music called parlor music, music being played in the parlor, and in this case, usually by middle-class women in the Boston area, dressed real fancy, and they were playing those small guitars, and they were called parlor guitars. They, if you were into Martin guitars, these would be size two and size one. They didn't even get up to zero. And there were small instruments, and there was a, very much a, an imitation of classical music, but it was not as deep. Uh, it was easy tunes to play, and it was very, very popular from, I would say, from the 1830s, really hit a high point in the 1850s, right up until the turn of the century. And what's amazing is that this Spanish Fandango was written out in music but the author said, tune your guitar, as we just tuned our instrument, D, G, D, G, B, E, D, excuse me, but play the music as if you were in regular tuning. You get that? That's pretty weird. So look at the music and play it as if you're in regular tuning, but your guitar is tuned down to this open G tuning, and out would come Spanish Fandango. Now this tune was so popular that it was being played all throughout the Northeast and eventually in the 1850s as America, as the uh, people started to move west, you had companies like Sears and Roebuck and Montgomery Ward and they were mail order companies, sort of like what today we have with Amazon. And they had huge catalogs selling everything from pots and pans to tents to um, sterno stoves to banjos, ukuleles, and guitars. The, none of them were great instruments in a sense. They weren't fine instruments. A lot of them were made in Chicago or in New York City. They were Stella guitars, Washburn guitars, and they would be sent all as the people were moving west and they wanted a guitar, they would order an instrument. And one of the tunes that was in the little booklet in the cases that came with these cheap guitars, you know, they had a book of tunes to learn right away, guess what? It was Spanish Fandango. 
And somehow that tune gets in the repertoire of Mississippi John Hurd, Elizabeth Cotton, black and white musicians. And out of that, we get this Spanish tuning, why it's called Spanish tuning. Now, with this tune, we're going to be playing a melody. I'm going to get myself a banty. And then we're going to repeat that. Yes, and you could play that with a bottleneck. And it's sort of the response. Da, do, 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 do. I love that. But when we start to add our right hand technique in here, we're going to have something like this. Just try to go up and down with your hand. Hit the first string with your index finger. Okay, now let's take a look at exact the licks we're playing. So the right hand, we, we're in agreement, it's going to be going like that. Our left hand, gonna three open first string, four notes there. I'm gonna get myself a fancy. So that you're going to the eighth fret. And now, if you look at my fingers, I have my ring finger playing that eighth fret, but right behind it, I have my middle finger and index finger so I can control that sound, because I want it to sound almost like a bottleneck. Now we have a specific lick. So this goes from the fifth fret, from the third to the second open. And you can slide or pull off. Whichever one you like best. And then we take our finger, and again, in this case, I have my middle finger, but right behind is my index finger, helping to control that slur note, that wham note. And I slur up, hit my open second string, because I'm sort of leading right into that second string, open third, and hit my fifth string bass, and then I have my bass response. So I'm going to hammer on the second fret of the sixth string, hammer on the third fret, and sort of tickle it, going up, and then just strum. So that first line, which would be the same as the second line practically, but we'll show you a couple of variations, will be this. Oh, I forgot one thing here. After this lick, we have that, a hammer on the third fret of the fourth string. So we have Hit the fifth string bass. So let's try to do it again. And now there I sort of fancied up that bass response. I had my hammer on. I can do some more hammer-ons after that. Or I can just play the fifth string three times and try to play as staccato as possible. Or go into another hammer-on. There's a lot of variations there. The second time through, instead of playing just that, how about we play the index and middle finger on the fifth fret and the sixth frets of the first and second strings. So this sounds a la Robert Johnson. Mm -hmm. 
and we can go into a bass response after that. Just doing a quick hammer on on the sixth string, then the open fifth string. And now to end it. Okay, so we're going to play octaves very similar to Skip James when he played Special Rider Blues. Sliding in with my ring finger and middle finger from the second to the third frets of the first and fourth string. Again, that bass lick. And we ended the same way. So let's try playing it slowly and check out the tablature with this and see uh, that you're playing the right notes at least. And let's try to play it together. Let's put in a descending bass going there. So what that is, just octaves, our middle finger and our ring finger. And I'm plucking on my right hand. I have my thumb hitting the sixth string, my index finger and my middle finger come up on the third and fourth strings. Descend it chromatically, one fret at a time. And then end with the fifth string bass. Now a variation that you can do is to play everything you were playing, but play it on the fourth string and on the fifth string. Well, it makes it logical because the fourth string is the same as the first string, but an octave lower. This is the same as the third string. So you can go. So that's quite a sort of a free form. We're playing a blues in open G in the Delta style. We'll split the screen. The tablature will show you everything that I'm playing on the split screen. And you're going to have to try to do this very slowly because a Mississippi John Hurt tune is much simpler. Even the classic rag, learning a classic rag by Scott Joplin, is in a lot of ways simpler than playing this style, which is sort of free form in a way with your right hand. Let's try to do it together nice and slow. <laughs> 